Cool, we on? Mic check, we on? Cool. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the 11th episode of Tripping with Theo Bold. I'm your host, Andre Theo Bold. I go by AT. I go by Dre Theo. I go by Dre. And I probably have some more nicknames that are yet to come. But welcome. You know what I'm saying? Um, first and foremost, I want to encourage you to hit that, that like button. Hit that subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? Um, share this video with a friend. You know what I'm saying? Put comments in the comment section. You know, if you have any suggestions on what you would like to see me talk about during this show, put it in the comment section. If you want to ask me a question or uh, just be a goon or, you know, uh, troll, do all that shit. Like, I don't care. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Free speech. Do what you want. Right in my chat section or my comment section. But anywho, um... Welcome to the show, and as y'all know, uh, this is called Tripping with Theo Bold because I literally trip in speech and I trip in thought, All right? I uh, grew up with a uh, speech impediment, um, had a hard time talking growing up, um, and uh, I'm not completely over it. Like, I have hiccups, I have days where my shit don't come together like it needs to, but hey, I'm human, but uh, you know. It is what it is, you know, and uh, I trip in thought, you know, figuratively, you know, because I have like, you know, crazy ideas. I'm, I'm unorthodox, you know, um, I'm just a man trying to figure it out at the end of the day. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to figure it all out. You know, I'm not going to act like I figured some shit out or I'm not going to act like I got it together because in actuality, I probably don't. Right. Like one of my favorite uh, movie quotes or TV show quotes is from the old MacGyver and MacGyver uh, quoted his uncle forgot if his name was uncle Pete or whatever it was but he said a wise he said what did he say how's it go yeah a fool only a fool is sure of anything but the wise keep guessing right so that's how I am I don't know shit I'm just guessing and trying to figure all this shit out so we here um but before I get started let me go ahead and do some uh promotion a uh, shout out to uh let me let me try to get the company name right of this of this company right quick because I like I like what they produce you know I'm I'm a fan. Yeah, blackbrand.us. Look at this hat, man. This is a beautiful hat. Look at this hat. Look at the iridescent, the reflective joint. Kings. Love this hat. You know I got it on their site. Now don't everyone go in Russian copy and be like me. Like try to be original and find your own reflective hat. But just the material, man, and just the quality is dope. Like when I first got so so when I went on the website and looked at the hat, uh, it looked uh, like really super like it looked like really like metallic and I was like oh I got to get that hat that looks that looks different you know so I got it and when I took it out the box you know it looks like a regular gray like dusty hat and I was like man I was like man these motherfuckers and got me but when I put that thing on and put it in light look at this shit this is my new favorite hat so um. Thank you, Black Brian. Uh, keep doing your thing. Keep making these dad hats for, you know, folk like me. Because I love these little dad hats, you know. And then again, you know, I got to plug the water people. Who is this? This is a uh, keep to. You know what I'm saying? I'm drinking my water. I'm trying to stay hydrated every day. That's what I'm doing. Like it has the uh, time of day. If you can see it, it has the time of day. You're supposed to start off at 8 o'clock and drink your way down to 8 p.m., you know what I'm saying, to make sure you get the uh, the right amount of water you need in your body, you know, because a lot of y'all run around, a lot of y'all run around out here funky and don't know why, and it's because you ain't drinking water, you know? Like y'all run around here with no, with sandals on and your feet stinking. And then you want to go and get gummies and pills and go see a doctor when all you got to do is drink some water, you know what I'm saying? So, Man, shout out to them, man. Good product, you know. So let's go ahead and get on into the ah, 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 say what portion of the show where we talk about everything speech impediment related. Um, so I do that little that that ah, 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 
part in the beginning because like that's like an exaggeration of what I would do whenever like um I was trying to talk because a lot of times like my vocal folds or my throat just would like lock up and I couldn't get my words out and it didn't sound like that it was probably more violent um and more erratic than that but you know we having fun we we up here poking that shit you know what I mean um and oh and since I you know am still uh recovering from a speech impediment if you want to call it that or I have remnants of a speech impediment uh when I mess up I'm just gonna go man come on Dre and then you'll know that you know I fucked up and we just move on that's what we do we call it out and we move on so anyways um you are on the say what portion of the show everything speech impediment related so um yeah I had this uh thought man today you know I was I was reflecting back on my days and um I remember I used to feel bad, man. Like, I used to feel, uh, not bad, but I used to feel awkward, you know, because I used to, um, I wore bra. My mom and dad got me braces. Um, I wore braces, I think, ever since, like, fifth grade all the way through, like, my sophomore year in high school. So, I had braces for what, three, I had braces for, like, six, seven years, I think. Um, and... I'm not sure if someone said this, but I'm pretty sure people thought it because the thought, here's the thing, right? When, when something is thought about so much that you can't remember if someone said it or not, it probably, it probably needs to be said, or probably is something that needed to be said. But, uh, one thing I thought about was like my folks like worked hard on getting my teeth. Like I don't have the best smile in the world, but my teeth are pretty much straight, you know, but somewhere in the back of somebody's mind or in my mind i'm like man i'm getting my teeth fixed and i can't talk worth a lick you know what i'm saying you're gonna have this pretty smile but can't say shit <laughs> so uh that's something i thought about i thought that was funny you know like i can hear like older people saying something like uh no ain't that a shame he done went out here and his folks done paid all this money to get his teeth fight to get his teeth right, to look beautiful, just to not to be able, or just to, I'm fucking this whole thing up, but you know, let me try it again, this impression, uh, it's like, you done work so hard, your parents done work so hard to, to spend all this money on your mouth to get you a pretty smile, and you can't talk worth shit, mm, what a tragedy, what a shame. So I used to feel bad, man. Like, you know, I used to be like, man, I got my teeth look right, but can't talk worth a lick. You know what I'm saying? So that shit was kind of embarrassing in and of itself, you know? And then uh, my dentist was, I, I, don't, I don't think he was a con artist, but I think he was trying to like, he was trying to push shit. You know what I'm saying? So I remember uh, whenever I went to the dentist, I, I think I think he had to convince my folks to get braces for me and shit, you know? And um, I remember him saying, "Oh yeah, so you know, when we put these braces in, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a contractment, or there's gonna be a piece inside of his mouth that's gonna lock his tongue down, so he has to talk slow, and it's gonna force him to work on his speech." And my folks were like, "Oh yeah, now, give me all that shit." And I was like, "Oh man, this motherfucker know damn well this shit ain't gonna fix this shit. This nigga ain't stuttered a day in his life. He talking about he building shit to fix people's mouth, nigga. Whatever." Like that's the funny part about about this whole speech impediment shit, man. Is uh, is the funny part about this whole speech impediment shit is, like, I hear people talk and try to come up with a solution to fix me, and internally I'm like, nah, y'all don't have a fucking clue, but I can't say it back because I got the fucking impediment. Like you know what I'm saying? So I got to sit there and try this dumb shit that people want me to do, knowing that this shit probably ain't gonna work. <laughs> Um, but anywho, what else? Uh, but nah, but um, I think the solution is you gotta think. It's not just thinking positive, but you gotta accept like whatever it is you got. You know what I'm saying? Um, and um, you know, at the end of the day, it's like all this thing I've learned from all this, this uh, like having with I thing I learned with having speech problems is, is you just gotta like. You got to be self-conscious, but you also, like, 
can't be afraid. Like, you got to be able to be like, look, there's going to be times when I open up my mouth and I'm not going to be able to get shit out or I'm going to mumble it or it's going to sound funny and people are going to laugh in my face. But, you know, the fuck am I going to do about it? You know what I'm saying? But if you sit there, you let that eat, eat away at you and tear away at you, you know, then it's like, you know, it's, it can really damage like a lot of things in your life. You know what I'm saying? It can really just damage your outlook on life. So, you know, you know, whatever. Um, but another thing I thought about doing, I'm, a, I'm thinking about it, but, um, I thought about getting like drummer headphones, you know, I mean, getting me like drummer ear blockers. Right. Cause I heard that like drummers and I think they sell them at like, uh, at the guitar center or whatever. Um, but, Basically, what it is is um, it's like it's like plugs you put in your ear, and I, I don't think they don't stick out. I think they're just like small things you put in your ear, and it helps the drummer to be able to you know keep rhythm better because he can focus on the drum sounds, right? So, like right now, I have my I have my earbuds in right now, but they're like powered they're powered off right now, and I have them in because I can focus on my voice better. I can hear my voice in my head rather than my voice going out to nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So, um. You know, just something I might think of. Now, I wouldn't wear these on stage because on stage I got to be able to hear the laughs because I'm a comedian, if, if I didn't tell you guys. But I got to be able to hear the laughs so I don't step on my laughs during my jokes. You know what I'm saying? But um, when I'm like doing everyday like one-on-one -on -one correspondence, like we're just talking to people, like put the drummer headphones in because all the distracting noises really be fucking with me, you know? But anywho, um, that's it for the... <laughs> say what portion of the show now we're gonna get into the come on dre shit now we're gonna get into the dfs portion of the show where we talk this daily fantasy sports shit all right so um as y'all know i only do nba tiers for right now so last episode or last episode of my um of my tripping with theo bold i I was doing baseball tiers and NBA tiers, right? And that's too much. It just takes too much time. I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. I want this podcast to be under an hour. So for right now, now that we're in basketball season, I'm just going to keep doing M I'm just going to keep doing NBA um until we get deep into the playoffs to where they take away tiers or NBA tiers and then I'll start doing M I'll start doing MLB tiers, all right? Just to keep the show short and condensed. So, but anyways, I want to talk about my DFS woes from last week. So last week in my tiers lineup, I picked both Jimmy Butler and Bam out of Bayou or Bam out of Bayou, you know, per the data, you know, and um, they bullshitted. You know what I'm saying? Like both of them combined put up 70 points and that's not, that's not what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be like combined like 90 at least you know where both of them are like in the 40s at least like 45 like 45 is their minimum that's their floor and i picked both of them and they both got me uh like either right at 35 or right under 35 points so shame on them you know shame on them shame on them shame on them you know like if they want to win a championship man they got to help me win that's that's the rule because i know i know how to pick them so I think, but whatever. Um, so now we're getting into, let me just run down my lineup, right? So today, the games are going on right now. Um, I'm a little behind schedule because, you know, I'm getting packed up. I'm working on work deadlines, doing all these different things. But um, let me just get ashy. I'll be all right. Um. But yeah, so oh, in addition, in addition to doing NBA tiers, I also am doing uh, the uh, ticket version, right? Where I just don't win money, where I'm not just playing for money, but I put in like 25 cents to win an opportunity at winning an opportunity to play in the $25 millionaire tournament, right? And um, it's 25 cent, you know. So I basically play a variant of my roster to see if I can't get that. Because I used to, I, I never used to, I never used to forward the tickets like that, but really the tickets are the hustle, right? Like if you can win a little bit of cash and then get an opportunity to play into the millionaire joint, boom. You know what I mean? So who do I got right now? Uh, who do I go with? 
So in my NBA tiers lineup, I went with um I went with Joel and B in tier one. I went Bradley Beal, tier two. That went Rudy Gobert, tier three, John ja Morant, um, tier four, Devin Booker, tier five, and then I went DeJounte Murray at tier six. So uh, I looked at the data and so far, you know, everything is looking like I might be able to at least get in the green at the end of the day or get in the black. All right. So DeJounte Murray at halftime, I already got 33 points. I got him. All I, all I needed for him was like 40 something and it's halftime. But damn, the Spurs are blowing the Spurs are blowing the Celtics out right now, 77 to 48. So hopefully the Celtics can put up a little bit of a fight. So DeJounte Murray can stay in the game and get me like 50. Like that would be dope. Um, so tier one, it was a toss up between Embiid and uh, uh, Westbrook because Westbrook, I think, is on his. I think Westbrook's coming back off of two 60 plus point uh, fantasy point games back to back, and he typically can do that three times in a row. So I played him in that in that in that ticket tournament, and then Joel Embiid. Um, I looked at the data and it's like he he could do something crazy or at least put up like 50 and he's already at 30 right now and it's nah, he's not going to do that shit it's end of third quarter I mean, he bullshitting he got 30 points 6 rebounds yeah he's not doing that shit and then score is uh, they're already beating these motherfuckers it's 94-76 so whatever so but yeah whatever so that's what I got so my DFS field bowl prediction of the week is Devin Booker. I think Devin Booker going to get me 50 fantasy points tonight. 50 plus fantasy points tonight. So, there you have it with uh, the DFS portion of the show. Um, and then last week, I think, so I've been on I've been on kind of a little hot streak, a little lukewarm streak. I've been winning like $1.25 here and there, $1.50 here and there. So, you know, um, I'm basically earning my right to play in another competition every day. So, I'm doing all right. But uh, what else we got coming up next? So now let's get into the, um, let's get into some news, right? Let's talk about, let's just shoot this shit with some news. I'm trying to think what news are, what news was out there that I saw? Uh, what news do we have out there? Um, oh yeah, man. Um, you know what? I'm not, I'm not political. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even gonna say nothing about any of these politicians. All I'm gonna say is this, right? To me, all politicians are the same. You know, um, they're all on the same team, and um, I don't know. I just don't. I don't respect what they do, right? I don't respect what they do at all. They don't. They don't do shit. So, um, whatever. Um, I'm at the point right now when it comes to like politics and politicians. I just ignore whatever they say. Like they don't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? I know that sounds negative, but I don't care. All I do is I read the bills that they're that they're passing in the Senate and whose name is assigned to what. And I don't even care whose name is signed to it. Like I said, I look at the bill to see what they're trying to do. And then I just play and readapt my game accordingly. You know, I don't really get involved in all that stupid shit. I ain't got time for that, you know. Um, so yeah, I was I wasn't gonna bring that up with the news joint. Try to think what else uh happened in the news. Yeah, I'm not really a news current events person, but if something crazy happens in the in the news, and I'll definitely like speak on it, you know. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the the simpology section of the show, right? Let's move on to the simpology section. Ooh, now I'm not gonna talk about that because I don't want to. I don't want to um, snitch on myself. Long story short, I had an I had a situation where I was getting to run around by a company, and I ended up getting a product for free. Um, and I don't think they realized that they gave it to me for free. So um, yeah, I'm not gonna tell on myself. See, you have to learn, Dre. You have to learn how to keep the art of um there's an art to keeping your mouth shut. Right, that's what I meant to say. 
Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Let me see what else we got going on in this news. Um, yeah, I uninstalled my CNN app. I don't, I don't fool with Fox or CNN. Just, I just, yeah, they make me sick. Um, and I'm not gonna talk about uh anything quarantine related if you know what I mean. Um, Colt 45 related because uh they don't really want people to really express how they feel about this shit. They want us just to get with the program to keep this country moving. So I'm not trying to get my YouTube page snatched down or this video snatched down. So um like I said, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Uh Oh, let's talk about this. Sure. This is actually a good transition from DFS, right? This is actually a good transition from the Daily Fantasy Sports part, right? So, in the news, it's kind of old, but it's kind of like resurfacing a little bit, is there's the whole Deshaun Watson situation, right? So, in case you don't know, Deshaun Watson um, is a quarterback for the Houston Texans. He went to Clemson. Um, and uh, he... Um, he basically got overlooked in the draft, got kind of passed up and ended up on the Texans and became a beast of a quarterback. He's, he's putting up numbers and throwing that ball around, you know. And uh, what happened was he he didn't. Well, first of all, I think that, well, not let me. First of all, it's my conjecture that he was very upset when the Texans gave away DeAndre Hopkins, right? Like that was like his bread and butter, right? He, they basically gave away his best receiver. So after that, you know, he just told the staff and the management that, look, he wants to be, he doesn't want to make the decisions or he doesn't want to, he wants to basically have input to what they say because he feels like he gives them a, a perspective. Come on, Dre. He feels like he gives them a perspective um, that they don't, know about because they're not on the field and i agree with that you should want to hear from your quarterback you know now whether you do what he says that's a whole nother issue but he just wanted some input and i think what he was was he wanted them to interview eric b um who was long overdue for a head coaching job that dude is a brilliant offensive coordinator b brilliant offensive mind and he's just yeah like we're, we're witnessing racism in, in the nfl but i mean whatever motherfuckers want to act stupid so let him act stupid whatever um if they want to call a go to pig let him call a go to pig you know whatever um but anyways um he wanted input on on like the next head coach and input on like things that would help them win a super bowl because he wants to win so long story short they reminded him that hey boy they said hey boy this ain't your team know your place that's basically what they said without saying any words right they basically went ahead and ignored him made a move and didn't even involve him to get his input on what they thought about what they were going to do so he was like all right well fuck it i want out so he's been saying he wants out he wants out he wants out he wants out now all of a sudden you got all these chicks coming forward talking about uh all these all these massage chicks talking about hey uh he assaulted me did all these things and you know um did inappropriate things when we were giving him a rub down you know what i'm saying so now you got all these rub down bitches coming out talking about you know hey this motherfucker foul now if deshaun watson did those things i don't condone that that's wrong you know um but to me i find it very funny how we ain't hear none of this shit until he said he wanted out right so um it seems like now they're trying to damage Deshaun Watson's career by coming forth with all this stuff. And if Deshaun Watson goes down, I hope the Texans go down too. I'll I'll go ahead and just front it, right? Because like I said before, I don't condone like inappropriate behavior with anybody. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta respect people, you know, and you don't wanna you don't wanna disrespect people, period. You know what I mean? Um but at the same token I feel like the Texans need to be investigated on this shit because that shit don't make no sense, man. 
up until the point he said he wanted out, everything was cool. But now, once he said he wants out, all these chicks, all these, all these rub down chicks coming out talking about, hey, he was doing like, like he was doing inappropriate shit the whole time, and now they're trying to throw the book at him, you know. So what it looks like is it looks like a form of it looks like a form of extortion, in my opinion, you know. It looks like either the Texans were like, hey man, you know, come come stay on our team, sign this contract. We got these rub down chicks that'll rub you down. And when they massage shit, they massage shit, you know, and he signed up and took the bullet and then he didn't realize what he signed away, you know, um, and then they basically forced him into that situation, knowing that if he left, hey, we're going to walk away and now you got to deal with that. Or or it was the shit was going on and the Texans basically were paying the massage chicks under the table to like keep hush. Because hey, we gotta we gotta keep this championship train building, and then when the moment uh, Deshaun was like, "Nah, I don't want no parts of this no more," uh, they were like, "Hey, okay, well we're gonna let our money dry up, and whatever happens, happens, right? That's a form of extortion. That's blackmail." So I'm just saying, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying that's what it looks like from the outside looking in, just based on the timing of the events of everything. So, um. You know what I'm saying? So that that actually leads into into that's actually a good lead into the symbology section of the show, right? Because I feel like women are getting like here's the thing, right? Dudes as a whole or male society as a whole did women wrong. I'm not gonna go deny that they did. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like there's a I feel like there's a gray area where there were women there are women that take advantage of the situation to you know cheat the system to get ahead you know what i'm saying i'm not saying all do it but I, I know there's there's a gray area between that shit right like you have dudes that that mean well and want to do well but then there's a gray area where chicks go in and they kind of sell something or they advertise something knowing that hey if i don't get what i want at the end i can then go flip it and turn myself into the victim you know what i'm saying and i think that shit needs to be that that shit needs to also be be a uh, slap down you know but um but yeah when it comes to the uh the female shit or whatever it's like you just when it comes to money and just business like you got to like treat females professional and i mean professional like even if they come on to you you got to be like nah what are you doing right like it has to get to the point where if as a male if you really value your business and the chick is trying to force her way on you you know, by selling sex or whatever and trying to lure you in, you got to almost like, like, I'm not saying reverse the game, but you got to like do something to where you file something or a charge that protects you at the end of the day. If you're, if you're really not trying to do nothing and they're, and they're trying to like put themselves in a situation to, because really what it is, man, like a lot of the shit, what it looks like is it looks like, it looks like a power struggle, right? It looks like female, it looks like, it looks like uh, females are tired of having their yams being leveraged, but at the same token, they're trying to lean into the poor behavior to cash on to, to cash in on it later. You know, that's what it looks like. You know, like like why wait until a dude is getting ready to pop and blow up and is about to get all these resources and all these deals to, to then come up and say, hmm, well, ten years ago. He fondled me in my office and it I didn't I didn't like it. Okay, why didn't you tell back then? Well, I I I was scared. So why are you not scared now? Right? This dude is a mogul now, he got all this bread, right? He got he got resources, he got people that work for him. So now you can come out now, but you couldn't come out back then. I'm just saying, look, if um if something is wrong, you gotta jump you gotta jump on it when it's wrong. Like, I'm not going to sit back and complain about some shit that happened 10 years ago. You know, that, that, I mean, to me, it's like, you got to get over that fear. Like that, it's just, it just doesn't look, it's not a good look. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, so as a, as a man, when you conduct business with women, you got to like be about the business, yo. If, it, if there's money and dollars or cents attached to that, you got to be about the, but you got to be about that business. And if they trying to take it somewhere else, you got to like, be, you got to let them know, look, hey. I'm here for this. I signed up for this. 
Um, I feel like this is going in a direction that's unprofessional. Um, if you want to continue down this path, let's end the interaction right now and um, let's call it quits or whatever, right? And just nip that shit in the bud. But see, a lot of dudes are dumb, right? Dudes, dudes wanna dudes wanna smash and get the yams by any means. And when you do that, like they don't realize that 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 cheese can be a trap. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta look at you gotta look at the yams like cheese in a mouse trap, and we the mice. You know what I'm saying? You gotta analyze. Hey, is this something I should even be doing? Like what's the re like what's the repercussions if I try to get this piece of yam in this mouse trap? You gotta analyze it, you know. And then the part that sucks for dudes is when dudes do that, there'll be other mice that come around that that'll go nibble at the yams, and then you'll be left without. And then it's like you left with just um you. At, at that point, the dude is left with just a hard dick and some porn. You know what I'm saying? So, whatever. Um, like I said, I'm not perfect. I don't, I don't, um, I don't, I'm trying to just be honest, man. Like I said, in society, I feel like, I feel like people, I feel like me in particular, I can't talk for everybody else, but I feel like me personally, I feel like I've been trained to lie, right? I feel like I've been trained to lie my whole life, you know, from kindergarten. You know, from kindergarten, first grade, I, I feel like I, I feel like I was trained to lie, man. Um, and it's a it's a it's a bad feeling, you know. Like I go, I always go back to like you know when I was like in kindergarten and like first grade, you know. They would be like, "Hey, if you want to get these graham crackers, you gotta you gotta be quiet." Okay, cool, be quiet. And then it was in addition to that, you gotta put your finger on your mouth. Like, I remember that shit. You gotta sit there and you gotta make your arm get tired from holding your finger on your mouth for 15 minutes so you can get a graham cracker and shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on, Dre. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're sitting up there hungry as shit. You gotta... Right? At the end of the day, you know you don't want to do that shit. It has nothing to do with getting a graham cracker, but it's like, that's what the people... See, it's the whole carrot donkey shit, you know? Like, basically, the teacher at that point was the uh, person holding the carrot in front of us the, the carrot was put your finger over your mouth and i'm sorry well no the, the carrot was the the uh graham crackers right but they were making us walk and move and chasing it and chasing it was like putting a finger on our mouth so i'm saying so that's a form of lying because why the fuck i gotta do that like why do i gotta do that to get this you know what i'm saying and it comes into that whole power shit you know so um but when you have been trained that way Right, we live in a very transactional society. So when you've been trained to do something that somebody wants you to do to get what you want, you're gonna like not really think about how you feel, and you're not really gonna think about about being honest. Like you're not gonna give a shit, you know. And I feel like that spills over, and that breed that breeds into other parts of of people's lives. So anywho, that's why that's. Also, a reason why that's another motivating another motivating factor behind this podcast because I want to tell the fucking truth, man. I want to tell the truth and be able to get my money at the same time, right? Because you got a lot of people that are wealthy and rich, but these motherfuckers is henpecked like a motherfucker. They walking around afraid to say anything because they know they say the wrong thing or blink the wrong way, they money gonna get took. So a lot of shit needs to be said, and people want to get offended. All right, how much do I owe you? I want to be I want I want to be like that, right? I want to be I want to be at a point in life where I'm like, you know what? I'm speaking my truth. I may not be the richest man in the world, but oh, so if I don't say this, you you're going to take my check up oh, matter of fact, let me go ahead and um and 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 um take the burden off of you. Here's a check for this. Get the fuck out of here. Like that's how I want to be. And that's and that's arrogant, but it's like I don't want to sit up here and have to force myself to believe in something that I don't believe in just to get a fucking check. You know what I mean? So, whatever. Let's move on to the symbology section. I think we already said that, right? So, um, we talked about the Deshaun Watson shit in the, in the symbology section of the show, or we talked about that before. Now we're leading into the symbology section of the show, where we talk about everything simp related, right? Because, like I said, I grew up being trained to be a simp. I was I was a hardcore simp growing up, but now it's like, mm, nah, 
I get the game now. So, um, yeah. So today I want to talk about text messaging. Right? I want to talk about text messaging. Um, so in the simp world, there's things can get out of things can get out of whack, right? Things can get out of balance, you know, because you can either overanalyze text or you can blindly respond too fast to text right and if you do either of those two things you are operating in the simp realm you know because either way your emotions like care like you care too much about about the outcome you know what i mean so i like i said back in my day i still even do it to this day where it's like when i get a text message from a chick like i'll analyze that shit like Damn, okay, what do I want? See, I'm back, I'm thinking back how I was back in kindergarten. Damn, what do I want? Okay, I want this. Shit, what does she want to hear? Okay, damn. And then it turns into like a video game. Okay, shit, what code can I put in to get what I want? Hmm, damn, that didn't work, right? And I used to, man, I used to, I used to like, I used to like text and then wait. And then now everything is around all my energy and focus is around this interaction. Like, is my phone going to light up with the response that I want after I put in what I put in? You know what I'm saying? Um, that, That's a shitty way to live, man. Like, I, man, that's a, it's a shitty way to live. And then also on top of that, there's the opposite end of the spectrum where, you know, you get a text from a chick and you're just so overwhelmed with happiness that you just put the shit back out but either way that leads to either way that can lead to analyzing the shit so i think what it is is you never want to analyze text messages right that's the key you never want to analyze like you never want to pre-analyze before you respond and you never want to post analyze right that's where you know you send something out and then you say fuck did i should i damn so was i supposed to have sent that if i wouldn't have sent that what would have happened I want to get to the point where I'm just like, you know, I get a text. If I don't respond, I don't give a shit. And then um, if I do respond, it's like I'm not sitting there checking my phone every 10 seconds to see what response I got back, you know. And that's not really just with women. That's with everybody, you know, like I'll, there'll be times when like I'll be like I have a have like someone call me up on the phone and like i'll miss their call and i'm like oh shit i missed their call damn you know and they'll be like hey man i tried to text you dog what's it was going on and then i'll try to call them back and then um they won't pick up and i'll just be like oh, okay hey look i just tried to call you back and i'll do hey look i just tried to call you back because i don't want to wait around the phone i don't want to wait around the phone for them to call me back because there's been times when i have waited around on the phone for like two, three hours doing like dumb shit when I could have been doing real shit. And now I'm pissed because I like, now it's like you wasted my time. So I think the way that I think the solution for that is um, if someone's trying to get a hold of me, I'll try to, I'll try to, I'll try to get him back. And when I get him back and if I can't get a hold of him, I'll just be like, hey, look, um, I'm doing blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'll be free at such and such a time. And if they don't hit me back, cool, whatever. I did what I could, you know? But I used to spend a lot of time just sitting around and waiting by this phone and shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's that's simp shit, right? Because um, it's simp shit because you because I care too much about the outcome, right? And it's not so much I care too much about the outcome. It's um it's like I'm doing things to try to stay on the good side of people i'm doing things to stay within good graces of people and you know i need to start you know doing a better job of just being about me you know so that's all that is but now i remember i had one situation with this one chick uh, a few years ago um and i don't think she realized how much like grief like she caused me and shit but it was like um i got her number I was trying to take her out to show her a good time to get some food and some drink or whatever because she was in the same area and she was she said she said she was bored 
you know so i'm like hey oh cool well, shit we can go hang out we can get some food we can grow we can go grab this we can go grab that but i didn't realize that she had no interest you know what i'm saying and like i said before there's nothing you can do to make a chick like you you know what i mean either she like you or she don't so when she gave me her number the reason why she gave me her number was because she didn't want to be a bitch and she didn't want to have drama pop off where we were at so she just gave me her number and we talked on the phone like once but i thought it was a good combo but it was i guess it wasn't to her and then um and then after that it was like we started texting only and it was like i had like a formula right i was like okay check in see how her day was going woo, woo, woo. okay cool hey um do you have any plans for the upcoming week or hey like what is your availability for this week or whatever and it was always you know oh i got something going like she always had something going on and she never was like oh but i'll be free this week right so that's the thing i learned man like my thing is if i'm dealing with a chick or trying to get at a chick i'll ask her hey what her availability is for um the following week and if her response is oh i'm just busy 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 and she doesn't try to say oh how about the following week or how about this date um she's not interested and i'm not gonna waste my time i don't care how bad the chick is and it took me a long it, it took me a lot of trials and tribulations of dealing with attractive like i've dealt with some some very attractive women you know what i'm saying and um they basically weren't i dealt with attractive women who weren't interested in me but they kind of like played like they were or they were trying to be nice but I really don't want the time for that. Like, I don't care about hope, nigga. I'm like, man, fuck hope. Like, yeah, if I see a chick that's bad and I, I'm like, hey, what's good? What's your availability? And she's on that, um, oh, well, I'm doing this and I'm busy and I got this going on. I got that. I got this and I got that. And then she doesn't say, oh, well, what are you doing? How about the following week or whatever, whatever? I'm like, hey, man, nice talking to you have a nice day and that's it i keep it moving like it's just not worth it like that whole and it's nothing against them it's just dealing with chicks that are not interested is just a waste of my time like that to, that to me is the biggest turn off you know like that to me is uglier than like the ugliest chick imaginable like that's like my that's like if a chick a chick can go from a 10 to a zero with me like if i never met the chick online or let's say let's say for example if i never met the chick but i'm seeing pictures of the chick i'm like oh yeah she attractive but if i meet her and she's not interested in me then i ain't interested in her i don't even care i could care less that shit I, man now i've seen man i've had so many chicks go from a nine to a zero in my book real quick like real quick <laughs> i'm like nah i got shit to do i, I ain't got time for that shit so anywho we live and we learn right so now let's go ahead and go on to the comedy bumps portion of the show but before we do that let me get a sip of this water right quick because a player's throat is parched there we go so comedy bump section of the show so last week I talked about uh, trying to get open mic started in Iowa when I lived in Iowa. And now this comedy bump portion, I think last week I said I'm going to talk about uh, this. My, I'm going to talk about my second comedy competition in Iowa. Um, and then I'm, then I'm, then I'm probably going to follow up with um, and the next week or, ne or the next one is going to be about um this semi or this famous comedian that uh i ran into um at a show but uh i'll probably shed some light on it towards the end of this story so i can remember what it was i was talking about for the next episode right but anywho this comedy bump deals with um my second comedy club my second comedy competition i did right so um so the previous year i'm coming from barely getting into the uh competition um um i was like i was i was 13th or i was i was a wild card and i came in and shot my way up to 
second place in the finals and technically uh other people were coming up to me after the show saying that yo you were funny boo, boo, boo. i thought you were funny but i had to vote for my friend because he brought me to the show but i thought you were funnier you know what i'm saying so i heard that and um i'm not saying i should have won first but i mean who knows but long story short i didn't win first right so now fast forward a whole year i've been doing open mics you know all over iowa you know with us like working on my craft and getting better and um i signed up for the second comedy competition to hopefully get first this time right so this was in the new venue it was it was in a hotel it was like in a lobby area it was actually no they actually remodeled one of the rooms and it was a dope room it was a dope room for comedy man it was low flat dark well well organized intimate nice backdrop everything nice nice sound great lighting um so i did this uh second the second um it was my second uh competition and i made it i qualified to get to the finals and in this contest i think i, th I think i got third I look back, I think I still have my, I think I still have that set on tape, and that shit was trash, man. Like, it's funny when you look back at your material that you thought was hot back in the day, and that shit was garbo. So, what happened, man? Uh, shit. Uh, so, I'm in the competition, and my boy Sharp is there to watch. Like, he's not in the competition, because Sharp was just so far ahead of everybody. Like, he was just it wouldn't have been fair if he was in the competition because he just knew he just had like he was not only did he have experience he had like just like talent and everyone respected what this dude did so anyways um i'm in the competition i'm doing these little weak jokes and at the time like my hat <laughs> it's funny i'm saying this because i'm probably going to hate my hats that i'm wearing now in years to come but I used to get these little Kango hats. Like I thought, I thought the Kango hat was the shit back back when I first started doing comedy, man. So I had like all these different flavor of Kango hats. I had like, I had like the um the net time joints for the summertime. I had the joints that were like, well they they weren't net, but they were like real thin. And then I had the real thick ones for the winter time. Like I was spending like fifty, sixty dollars for Kangos and shit. And I had like uh, I even got a fedora. I've, I even had like two Kango fedoras. And I would wear like a button up shirt and like some jeans and some um, like vans or whatever. That was like my look. And that shit was that shit was corny, man. I'm good. <laughs> I should post some video footage or some pictures of me when I used to what I thought looked acceptable and shit, you know. Um, now I'm simple. I just wear dad hats, T-shirt, hoodie and some and some dope kicks. And that's it. That's like my look. But whatever. Um, so anywho, I'm a doing this uh competition i'm getting i'm getting laughs right like i probably had a fair amount of the laughs in the room not saying i should have won the contest but you know but anyway let me get to the story right so what happened was uh we are i do my competition well i, I do my competition i go up or i do my set i go up or whatever and um at the end they're reading out the names and they said in third place is Andre Theobald. And everyone was like, everyone gasped because they thought I should, because they, I mean, everyone gasped because I guess because I came in second last year and I had a great like set last year and I did decent this time that they thought I was going to either retain second or move up. So everyone was like, oh, all right. So I got third. Um, And then they read off the second place person. And the second place person, everyone gasped. They were like, you know, <gasps> that's not weird. But, you know, they get, they gasped, right? Like, they were surprised. They were like, oh. So, everyone was like, okay, well, if these two dudes got second and third, who the fuck got first? Because, um, no, no one else really got, like, laughs like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not saying I should have won, but I'm just saying it was just, when they called our name, people were like, yo, this is kind of weird. So, they read off the first place person that won the joint. And I don't even want to give the gender of the person, right? Because I don't want I don't want I don't want this to get back to them. Cause I think they cool. Like I like we're not friends, but but I had a good but I respected them. Like they were cool. Like I had no beef with them. But this person that won the shit, 
got no laughs. And when I say no laughs, that's that's not an exaggeration. It was like pin drop. But they had a good performance, right? Meaning that they it looked like a polished set. Like it looked very polished. It looked very rehearsed. It, it, it was like it was pretty much it was it was theatrical, right? It was theatrical, but that's not the point of a comedy competition. Like in, in a comedy competition, you need to get them laughs. Right? At least get some laughs, but this person didn't get any laughs. So Sharp was sitting next to me and he saw my facial expression. Um and I could tell he was pissed because he was like, yo, this shit was like, this shit was rigged. Or not rigged, but it just, they didn't get it right, you know? From people looking on the outside in, like, that wasn't right, you know? To have people, you know, compete or to um, compete for a trial spot to can go to the finals to come out and have the outcome be that. So, Sharp, I remember he was like, I remember, like, he looked at me, he was mad, and he was like, Dre, you gotta go shake that person's hand. And I was like, but but he's like, no, Dre, dude, go shake, go shake their hand. Right? And at that moment, like the way he told me it was so um it was so aggressive. You know what I mean? Like it was so like in your face, where it was like, oh, there's a lesson to be learned here. And the lesson that was learned was comedy competitions, like, not every not a lot of times, like the person that is supposed to win doesn't win. You know, and that's just part of the game, you know, really, it's like I don't look at comedy competitions like a competition. I look at it more. I look at it more as a showcase where I'm just giving you the best I got, you know, and whatever people choose, you got to be cool with, you know. So I went up to that person and I shook their hand and that shit burned like a motherfucker. That shit hurt because you could see in their face that they really thought that they won. And, you know, um. They were like, oh, hey, I, I liked your set too, but, you know, hey, better luck next time. Keep working hard. And I'm like, but I had to smile and, hey, nah, hey, you know, you're right. I got to go home. I got to work on my, but great job, man. You killed it. Knowing that that person didn't get one laugh in that shit. So, um, but that was a bump that I learned. Like, that that was a tough pill to swallow, man. Like, that, that joint was hard. That was like one of the hardest. It wasn't one of the hardest things I had to do, but it was just that kind of got me prepped for the whole competition com, com, that that got me that got me prepped for the whole competition thing or whatever later on in life so i don't get too bent out of shape if i don't advance or whatever in a comedy show i just keep it moving you know um and whatever uh but yeah so that's 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 the comedy bump that i wanted to talk about for today so the next comedy bump we're going to talk about um is going to be uh all i'm going to say is Woo, 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 woo. Right? There's a comedian that's a pretty big name back in the day. Had a situation um, where uh, I'm not going to ruin it, but that's going to be what the next comedy bump is about because that was a pretty significant bump along my journey where um, it kind of like showed me how messed up things can be. So, anywho, uh, before we get out of here, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you got any questions, if you have any advice, if you want to be a troll, if you want to be a goon, put all that bullshit in the comment section. I don't give a shit. Whatever. Um, make sure you tell a friend. Tell your friend to tell a friend. And uh, come on back so we can talk more of this, uh, you know, talk more of this shit. But uh, what else we got? So, so coming up, what, what do I have coming up? On my calendar, my calendar's right here. Um, I ain't got shit coming up. Uh, <laughs> it's like now nah, I got a lot of open mics and shows. And, not no no shows, but open mics because you know the world is slowly opening back up again, and open mics are coming back up or they're coming around again. So yeah, I got some open mics. Um, I'm gonna go to. Um, I'm still waiting on my showcase information for this competition I'm doing that i advanced in so once i know you'll know um but just quick reminder right so i'm gonna be out of town for like three weeks so i may or may not post a video for like three weeks so it's not because so if you don't see a video posted on my channel it doesn't mean i forgot about you it just means that i'm handling business right so i gotta go back east 
um, and I gotta uh, handle some business, you know, um, back east. I gotta, yeah, I just gotta handle some business. So um, I might make some modifications on my channel. I might, you know, make little tweaks to things, but um, don't. So I'm saying, don't expect a video. But if you do, hey, there's a video. But uh, until then, thanks for tuning in to the eleventh episode of Tripping with Theo Bold. I've been your host. Andre Theo Bold. Once again, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, that's all I got. So uh, I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace.